Hello everybody, my name is Peter Binde and I'm from the company Dr. Binde Engineers and I want to show you some of the capabilities of the NX Magnetic Solver in the area of transformer analysis. What you see here is a very simple transformer, not very realistic, but it's good to show the capabilities and the main effects that are necessary to analyze a transformer. Let's go to the cut model first and see how the cut model is built up and then go to the FEM model and then go to the results. So the cut model is built up in a very usual way. So this means every cut engineer should be able to uh, build up an assembly like this. And of course the real transformer that you maybe have will be much more complicated, but you will see that at the end this has everything you need. There are several parts. Um, which uh, are put together in an assembly and uh, you can build up the geometry like ever you want in your NX system. Uh, you could also use a different cut system and import the cut geometry then to the NX system. Go to the next level. The next level would be the idealized part. So this is for the analysis uh, a step where you can simplify your geometry. So if you have a very complicated cut geometry you may want to simplify this before going to the analysis, removing small features that would make the mesh too complicated for example. In this case this is already a very simple geometry so we did not do any simplifications here. So let's go to the next step, the finite element mesh. And there you see the meshed part and let's go through the single meshes and see what are the properties of these meshes. We have a mesh that is called a second coil that is highlighted now. We have a mesh that is called primary coil, coil that is highlighted now. We have a core and we have the air mesh that is now visible. So let's start with the primary coil for example. The primary coil is this one. Let's go to the properties and the properties tell us that this one is having a material of copper. So electric conductivity is the most important property and uh, the conductor properties are set to a model that we call a stranded model. This means the vectors for the current are defined and the current have to flow in the direction of these vectors. The number of coils is set to 237, the fill factor is given and that's all we need. Let's have a small look into the coil, uh, into the uh, direction of the currents. You can see this in the mesh associated data of the mesh and let's go to a preview and what you see now is the every element has a small vector that points into the direction where the winding is going and so now every element knows the direction of the winding. This is the model that we call a stranded model for the 3D analysis. But we can also do it in another way. We can also model a coil in a very detailed way like we did it here in this output coil, the second coil. This one is simply a massive conductor that allows us to analyze the currents and the eddy currents that appear there in this conductor. So this would also be possible. And now let's look into the core. This is the core that is now highlighted. The properties of the core are quite important because there we want to analyze for losses uh, we have given a material here that is called sheet and let's have a detailed look into this sheet material. Let's go to this material sheet. So this is the one that we are looking for. Let's go to inspect this material and uh, we see that this material has electromagnetic properties and many other properties too. We have a BH curve. So this is for the saturation. Let's look at the BH curve. Let's plot the BH curve. Let's plot it here in this little window. And you see this is the nice, the nice way that the saturation effects are 
shown with this pH curve and all these effects, these non-linear effects are taken into account in the analysis and this is quite important for the accurate analysis of a transformer. So let's go out here, go out of this dialog and you see the electric properties are and conductivity is given and that's all that we need in the isotropic material. We could also make it autotropic, we could also make it temperature dependent and many other things are possible, um, but this is not necessary now. So let's go out of this dialogue and uh, on this core, what did we else do? Okay, we activated this electromagnetic force output, so this means we will have the information for the forces that are produced on this core because we activated this switch here. So, the last mesh that is created here is the air mesh. If we, if you see here that there is a box around the transformer and there is an air mesh built um, between the 3D geometry and this box and this is necessary for the for the electromagnetic field to be analyzed there. So that's all for the FEM and now let's make a little break and in the next movie we will look at the simulation file and I think at the results.